Hello everyone, I'm Jay and this is the Camden Stitch. Yes, I'm in camouflage today, yellow dress, yellow chair. Uh, I'm sorry if it doesn't show it probably to its best, but I shall be putting in some photographs later on. Today I'm going to be reviewing uh, this one, it is V9253 and um, if you are on Instagram you probably will have seen lots and lots of people um, posting versions of it this year and uh, last summer as well. I'm not sure when the pattern actually came out because I only started sewing last summer so um, it's been on the scene for a little while anyway. I've seen some lovely versions of it. Um, there is actually a Stitch Sisters review of that that came out this morning, I think, or last night. If you follow the Stitch Sisters, go on their channel and have a little look at that. If you don't follow them, then do follow them because they are a good laugh and they do lovely reviews of things. They do lovely sewing vlogs. Um, right, so this is the uh, offending garment. This is one of those that it's not really my style, but I got sucked in. I'm just basically really suggestible. I saw so many gorgeous versions. Every single time I saw somebody wearing this, I looked at, I thought, oh, I like that. Check the pattern number, and sure enough, it was V9253, it was this one. And so in the end, I thought, I'm just gonna have to jump on the bandwagon and make up a version. I made my version up in this cotton jersey from Colville. There is a little story behind it. I was on the Colville Fabrics Facebook group during one of their Sunday evening sales, which they usually do from about 4 or 5 p.m. Um, on Sunday afternoons. Again, if you're not part of those groups, it's probably only any good if you're in the UK because the shipping would be too much elsewhere and I don't actually know if they even ship outside the UK. But you can just search for Colville Fabrics on Facebook and you will find their group and they have weekly sales. Um, and this fabric came up and I absolutely loved it. And I think there was only 10 pieces of it and I missed it. You have to be quick and you have to say a code word in order, in order to get it. I know it sounds very compl complicated. Um, and I missed it, but one of the people who was lucky enough to get a piece was Rachel from Stitched Up. And um, Rach messaged me afterwards and said, uh, do you know what, you can have my piece. And she just gave it me, which was really, really generous of her. And it's so sweet of her because I saw this fabric and I absolutely loved it. And what's more, I've persuaded another person who got it to sell me their piece as well, because I love it so much that I want to make more um, garments out of it. I would actually like to make a little scoop neck, three quarter length sleeve uh, t-shirt out of it and I don't know, maybe something else as well. So I'd got this gorgeous fabric and I thought that this would be a great pattern to try it out with. Um, a key thing about this pattern is it's extremely fabric hungry. I had three meters and that wasn't enough to make the maxi version. So I made this midi version, which is version A, and I didn't even actually have enough to make it as long as, as it's there. I had to shorten it a little bit, but I make I shorten, tend to shorten bodices and things anyway because I'm only five foot three. Um, so I think when I get my other piece that uh, Molly is kind of going to send me, I'm going to add a frill to the bottom of mine and make it a maxi because I just really fancy a maxi dress. I don't have very many maxi dresses. Um, so it's a very easy Vogue pattern and it is very easy. It's a very quick make. There are only a few pieces to it. The bodice centre seam closes down the middle. It's actually supposed to finish at the waistband here, which would make it a good three and a half, four inches deeper um, than what it is at the moment. But there's no way I'm wearing that. At the moment, you can see a little bit of the vest that I've put on underneath. Um, I would definitely wear it without the vest. <laughs> flashing my breasts at you so yeah if you pull it down a bit you can see that's the amount of cleavage that personally I mean I say go for it it's just my boobs are saggy and uneven and if I wear it cut to where it's supposed to um a they fall out I would have to wear um I don't know what you call it in the states we call it tip tape here <laughs> it's double-sided tape that attaches your clothes to keep so I'd have to wear that which I don't really want to be faffing about with and also um because my boobs are uneven it would be sort of pulled to, pulling to the side and my cleavage wouldn't look even and basically it just would look a bit crap on me so not because of prudery but just for style reasons i stitched mine up a bit further and i'll show you the i don't know if you can see i just slip stitched it across on both the inside and the outside 
you can see it but you can't notice it and if you watch the Stitch Sisters vlog they will actually tell you how to do a ladder stitch which um, stops you from having to wrap it over, lap it one side over the other um, but it's such a tiny little lap that to me it doesn't matter I was a bit lazy about these sorts of things and also I don't know about you but it's probably not a good thing but my standards tend to be lower when it comes to jersey garments I am just a bit more lazy about finishing them and because I just tend to see them as kind of more sloppy everyday garments whereas when it's a woven item I go to great lengths I'm just pointing at this because this is my latest make um, but I'll talk about this in another video um, but I go to great lengths to finish them properly and make sure they're all perfect and if anybody inspected them from the inside you know I'd get top marks things like that but yeah I'm just a bit more sloppy with knit garments um, are you let me know downstairs if you are um, so it's an easy peasy make you make pleats in the boob area and you make matching pleats in the skirt and you have darts in the not back of the skirt not the back of the bodice um, and then you just stitch it all together there are ties that go on it but I didn't have enough fabric to make the ties and I wouldn't have bothered with them anyway because I would rather if something um, if something fits to here I would rather that I actually sewed it so that it's fitted rather than have it loose and then pull it in on the subject of fitting, let's talk about ease. What made it really a lot easier for me to fit big four patterns was when I understood um, the ease charts that they have. So basically they have de definitions of how fitted a garment will be. It will be fitted, semi-fitted, um, loose or very loose and then there's things with negative ease in knit garments. And there's a chart and if you google Butterick McCall's ease chart then you will find that. and I don't know if they use the same ease measurements but just I just assume that they do um, and you will see that for semi-fitted garments like this one they will contain four to five inches of ease now for me that I would define that as a loose garment if it's got four to five inches of ease probably because I'm small anyway so the bigger it is on me the more it swamps me if I had four to five inches of ease say in the shoulder area it would just look it wouldn't look loose it would look like I was wearing a garment that was too big for me um, so I use that information to make my decisions about what size I cut and if you look at body measurements the size small is an eight to ten which the bust is 31 and a half inches to 32 inches waist 24 to 25 well my waist is 30 inches so it's significantly bigger than that in fact my waist puts me in the large fitting measurements for this pattern which would be a 16 to 18 um, my boobs put me in a medium range and my hips again put me in a large now I'm quite a small person so we really have to ignore what the sizes say and look at the amount of ease that we want in garments also when I was fitting because I was making up my um, first garment that I'd made I, you know it was too simple for me to bother twirling it but because the first time I was going to make it I was going to make it in a jersey I knew that even if the size that I'd picked was a little bit small I would get away with it and sure enough if I was making this in a woven I might actually I wouldn't size up I might just stitch a slightly smaller seam allowance because I can see this area here that would be close fitted on me and it might just give me quite not not quite enough breathing room but everywhere else there there's ease there uh, obviously ease under the arms the shoulder fits quite good so what I'm telling you is a lot of it is kind of learning your own body and understanding how much ease you want on certain areas fit wise I mean obviously if you made a medium in this then and you had the ties on it then it would be absolutely fine you could pull it as tight as you want but because I've had lots of problems fitting lately around the shoulders I definitely definitely wanted to go for a, a small on the shoulders so if I made this again in a woven I might just grade out to medium at the waist and maybe have the ties on it it's a lovely easy sew the only bit that's a little bit tricky is finishing the neck binding I'll insert some photographs here and also the Stitch Sisters do mention the binding when they talk on about their review of this pattern. Um, the way that the pattern deals with it is you make a narrow hem on the front and turn that in and at the back you put binding on the back bodice 
and it was just a little bit difficult because of this being jersey and a little bit tricky to handle not that easy to press and it's quite a mobile um a mobile fabric it was wasn't the easiest to get a clean finish on that but it's fine and I was really lucky in that I'd got a packet of jersey bias tape that I bought when I was in Amsterdam I don't find jersey bias tape the easiest thing to come across in the UK I think you can buy it but it's quite expensive um, when I was in Amsterdam the markets there sold it and you got loads of packs in different colours and I think it worked out a little bit cheaper and I was fortunate in that I'd bought a packet of black white probably would have been better but it looks fine you can't see it through it uh, so I'm going to put in a few photographs of me wearing it. I'm not 100% sure about this length on me. I think I would prefer it to be a maxi length. As I said, um, when Molly sends me the extra piece of fabric, I shall probably add a frill to take it to really long. I think the style maybe swamps me a little bit. Um, it's not the sort of style I would normally wear. It's okay. I tell you, it's very, very comfortable. Um, and it's very good for the British summer because today i wore it out to walthamstow i popped up we had a, a london stitches meetup that i just popped up to say hello to them although i didn't stick around for very long and the weather's been very changeable here um it's, it's been quite cold overnight a bit windy and rainy but then sunny spells where it's really really warm and i've worn it with um black hundred denier tights um sandals and a sort of uh, vest slip underneath so I've got plenty of kind of layers on to keep me warm but the dress itself is quite loose and co cool and flowy and equally if it got really warm you could just take your layers off and wear this with just a bra underneath um, and it's yeah just a really comfy summer dress so let me know what you think about my version have you made your own version of this if so how low did you go um let me know what you think of, about this pattern in my downstairs and i shall see you very soon take care i hope your sewing projects are bringing you lots of joy oh if you've enjoyed the video today then here are some more of my other videos and uh, please press the subscribe button and press the ding bell so that you get notified when i uh, when my next video comes out. Thanks a lot. Bye. Yes, I am camouflaged. Um, yellow dress, yellow chair. Um,